come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Every Saturday night, right here on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, etc., etc. The Freak Show happens where a group of folks... (laughs) Watch a movie and then sit around and talk about it for your listening pleasure. These are the internet radio superstars who will bring it to you. Sean. Holly. Travis. And, oh, for first. Uh, for, uh, Purst. Public, Purst. Purst. Yep, a public service announcement. Thank Uh-oh. you, everyone who uh, wrote in your suggestions. We want to our... thank some of you, and the other <laughs> ones we want to uh, shame you, but we'll do that personally over email. We have lists in front of us right now, and we're whittling it down. It's a There's heated discussions going on. There's backroom bargaining, all sorts of things. But we're going to pick uh, some of your movies. can uh, switch hands during this if you want to send us <laughs> uh, your pick up there. We'll take bribes. Yep. Yeah. yep. <laughs> so we will be watching some of these probably on our next round of movie picks starting in January of 2017. So, again, thanks for uh, writing in. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. That's right. So tonight, uh, Travis picked the movie. Travis, what did we watch tonight? Cool World. From the year... <laughs> oh. From, that's not a year, Travis. To, that's what that. That was a year like. in his childhood. Yeah. The year of uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a. I remember that year. That's a good year. <laughs> yeah, ninety two. Directed that's what by. That's he thinks of when he thinks of Hollywood. Hell yeah. Yeah. Directed uh, by Ralph Bakshi. All right, so it's been a while like, since that's we've one of my done guys. A Ralph Bakshi movie. We also did mm-hmm. American Pop. So we've give us. We've also done. Did we do another Ralph Bakshi? No, we did George Plimpton. We've talked about him before, but we have not. This is only the oh. second, I believe. Yeah. So Bakshi, for those of you who aren't aware of him, he's an illustrator slash animator who got his start, I believe, doing the feature film adaptation of R. Crumb's uh, Fritz, Fritz the, the Cat, Cat, which was the first X-rated cartoon right, of all time. Of all time. X-rated. It's not he, great. He followed that up with <laughs> a great. live action slash animation hybrid called... Lord of the Rings. Heavy Traffic. Oh, Heavy Traffic. <laughs> Which was rated R. X. Was it? X. Yeah, believe it or not. I don't know. I never saw X. this one. Yeah. I don't know if I. That's the one that they now call. Uh, wasn't it called Coonskin or something? Coon, no, that's another one. Coontown or Coon some skin. shit? Coonskin. And that's called. I thought that shit, was. That's I thought they another... changed that to Street Trash. Or... Street Trash. Oh, Street no, Trash. Street something. Is it street trash? I thought it was street trash. We should know this. By looking it up. <laughs> well, they like, keep changing stupid names of these things. Because I've seen, like... Where we watch a movie and tell you nothing about it. Because, I, well, I really... I mean, or you got to Google it. It's kind of hard to find a lot of old Ralph Bakshi stuff. I remember the video store you actually used to work at is where I got most of my Ralph Bakshi. Like, he had a movie called Hey, Good Looking. Yeah. Which was Shit, kind of exactly... Right. It was almost like an animated version of Saturday Night Fever. Mm-hmm. It was almost exactly the same story, I swear. And, uh... What was yeah, the movie street you said? Trash. Street Coon, tra- well, Coonskin was Coonskin, the original release. But of course, people were like, what? Yeah. And the reason, you know, of course. And if, Heavy Traffic. I don't know if that's ever been made available on video. I think it is. Heavy Traffic. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's I, about like an animator, right? And he interacts with the cartoons that he draws. Really? I've it was never like seen it. 1973. Because I've never actually seen it for a run or anything. Yeah. Like that, so I've never. Well, he also did Lord of the Rings. He and, did the uh, Lord Wizard, of the Rings. Wizards. We did the Wizards. And Wizards is one of his populars. Yeah. His popular ones. And Fire and Ice. Fire and Ice. That's a big one. So this guy does a lot with rotoscoping, right? If you don't know, rotoscoping is where you basically film somebody and you trace over the frames and so you can get a fluid. You know, it's kind of like tracing. It's pretty much tracing. It's like... Uh, the animated version of motion, motion capture. capture. Yeah, it's basically what they did before. Uh, and I would say he's the, uh, or at least I would say Ralph Bakshi's, I mean, I mean, I don't think he like personally gets down there and draws every rotoscope frame. But like his movies to me seem to be the best rotoscope. Like they get a lot of like, I don't know, a lot of nice subtle movements out of people. Do other, I'm trying to think, like other animation where they did rotoscoping. I mean, Snow White had rotoscoping. I mean, a lot of Disney has rotoscoping. They just take the time to make it look more animated and, you know, not have it be. Where Ralph Bakshi, since he's on a kind of a budget, Mm -hmm. you can just kind of tell the tracing that's going on. And, Mm -hmm. you know, 
But uh, I Some guess... Some animation purists consider rotoscoping to be cheating. So it's always looked at... Which doesn't make it. sense because they've been rotoscoping cartoons literally since the freaking like, 40s or 30s. Because uh, Fleischer from Fleischer Studio, the guy that did uh, Popeye, Betty Boop, Superman. Max Fleischer. Yeah, he created rotoscoping. Even though, uh, like, Disney gets a lot of credit for creating it, and he did not. Uh, he might have improved upon it. I'm not positive. He could have done that. But, yeah, Fleischer did the first rotoscoping. And Bocci just got famous for massively employing it in pretty much every movie that he made. Yeah, almost it is every just movie weird, did. right? Like, I mean, I saw some of the like because uh, I've got Fire and Ice, and they have like the documentaries where they show like you know the people in the costumes running around. It's like, well, if you oh, went really? this far, yeah, right, to actually shoot mm-hmm. the film, why didn't you just like make the live action film? You know, who because he was it doing like fantasy was, uh, shit. He was doing like. Yeah, but they had him in the costumes. All well, you see, uh, these people have no money. That's the why Richard they're drawing. Linkletter movies. He did two of them. Rotoscoped, right? Scanner like, Darkly. Yeah, and I, uh, uh, Waking, Waking Life. Life. I saw Waking Life. I didn't see Scanner Darkly. Yeah. They're all right. They're I don't like, like that because that's version. more of a it's computer. Yeah, like computer I think television. that's. Yeah. I would say that's cheating. <laughs> that feels more like cheating. Yeah, because that's not getting down and doing the drawing. You know, because at least like Bakshi and these <laughs> other people, they're like at least. Like kind of adding right. stuff, I guess. Cheating I mean, in that, I'm sure it on... takes a lot of hard work to pull that off. Oh, they were drawn. Cheating. They yeah. were still. They were yeah. traced, but you know the coloring you can tell is uh, computer assisted. But those. like uh, Ralph Boxy's voice um, comes from, I think. I mean, I'd have to research this, but just by looking at his stuff, I think he's a New York animator, right? He's like a mm-hmm. New York cartoonist. Feels like it. And there's like a big difference. Like you could tell when you're watching a New York cartoon versus watching a, ca- a, a cartoon from California. And this goes like back to the 40s. Is if it was pretty much about how like it was if it was pretty much racist against Mexicans and black people. That those are your New York cartoons. If it was just a bunch of fairies dancing around to xylophone music, those were usually your California <laughs> cartoons. Just because you know. Uh, uh, you know, New York animators, you know, they had so much multiculturalism around them that, you know, they couldn't help but, you know, talk about the stuff they saw outside their window, right? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I mean, you could tell by Bakshi's stuff. I mean, he, he really can't help but talk about race. You know, he's always doing, like, weird Mexican characters, weird black characters, and, and the way they would do it in the 40s, right? Mm. Or the 50s. Oh, he's the, kind of yeah, a... Yeah, that style. He's the, kind of a well, throwback... Uh, artists sometimes, uh, and, and yeah, and uh, well, we were thinking that maybe between Fire and Ice and Cool World, he did a pit stop into television animation. He did the New Adventures of Mighty Mouse, and then somehow got to do this movie with Paramount Pictures because Frank Mancuso Jr., who was I assume still heading the studio in '92. Right, he was, yeah, like, he was the guy who produced all the Friday the Thirteenth yeah. mm-hmm. movies. So that was when he was like, you know, learning the ropes. And uh, but yeah, he produced. So this movie comes out of a time that it seems to me produced movies like Monkey Bone. No, and- <laughs> Monkey <laughs> Bone was way sure. later. Was it? Yeah, oh, that yeah, was way like, later. That was like nineties. This no, is no, this is no. Oh wait, what, what year? Monkey this? Bone was like is that early two thousands, like almost early two thousands, if not late. Like Monkey Bone was like too late, too late, dudes. You had your chance in the nineties. <laughs> probably was. It was really that. Yeah, as soon as like, as soon as Roger Rabbit came out, like everybody just wanted to do two thousand one, two thousand one. I, I I knew it was like too late, right. guys. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, Roger Rabbit came out and everybody just scrambled. Even like without money, right? They just scrambled to do this. This because... is the idea that Roger Rabbit brought back something that I think you hadn't seen since uh, Mary Poppins, or maybe what? Pete's Dragon, or like that era of Disney, right? Where you'd it, mm-hmm. you'd have live actor, live action, and animation in the same frame, mm-hmm. and that's just because they got better at shadowing and stuff. Because I want to say Roger Rabbit was even drawn twenty four frames per mm-hmm. second, yeah. and I want to say that's the only time they've ever done that. Even all these other composition shows. Whatever. I don't think they've like ever like doubling up physically drawn. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Mm. That's why Roger Rabbit still looks like the best out of all of them because mm-hmm. I mean they got like the shad. I mean, especially when, when it comes to the shadowing. Mm. But you remember like do you remember movies like Did you ever see Evil Tunes? No. Where that was kind of like 
Almost like a horror movie skin flick version of like these <laughs> demons come out, but they're all these cartoon. They look like cartoon Tasmanian devils or whatever. Is Gary Busey in that? Say no, like that. Like, that sounds uh, somebody's in that movie. <laughs> yeah. It's really expensive to get a hold of. I've been trying to get a hold of it. Some, like <laughs> Evil Tunes. That was in the early nineties. You that say? was in like, the early nineties. Roger Rabbit. Yeah, Evil that, Tunes. Evil yeah. Tunes. Huh. Yeah, yeah. So then Cool World comes along, right? Because I mean, I really think. I don't know if it was Jessica Rabbit or something. Just I was like, say, it had to have been all these guys who are like, man, I want to fuck Jessica Rabbit. What would that be like? Fucking a cartoon. Cool. Does, and yep. then that was where Cool World came from. Do I people wonder. actually want to cool fuck World. cartoons? Yes. Uh, <laughs> watching this movie. <laughs> I mean, I don't know from like. I don't know. He's like, no, I don't know if anybody else does. <laughs> Walking I backwards know. from that one. Well, no, like, I don't know. I can, I mean, this is the reason I guess this is one of my favorite movies because. The people who made this movie do. Like, knowing that, Absolutely. like, I mean, this wasn't written by Bakshi. This was written. No, those guys wrote Poltergeist. Michael Cray- Grace and Mark Victor? Didn't they write Poltergeist? I think mm. they're the writers on, or the producers. You have to yet. check me. Michael Grace, Mark Victor, Victor. Yeah. It seems to me they have something to do with Poltergeist. I but they were the writers. The Maybe main that. character in this movie, some dude named Jack Deebs, is like a cartoonist, ex-con. Yep. Yeah. Poltergeist. Writers? They wrote it. Writers. Crazy. Amazing. Interesting. So, uh, they probably fucked that ghost in the closet. (laughs) Well, I mean, there's a thing, I guess, like, you know, adolescent, uh, boys, uh, do tend to draw, uh, sexy women. I don't think it's adolescent boy. I think if you're an artist, all you do is have to pay attention to angles and body shapes and you had to redraw it and redraw it and redraw it and redraw it. It's hard not to like, like. I don't know. I mean, you just, you buy into what you're drawing, right? You're making it real. It's real in your head, right? And especially this Jack Thieves character who's in prison. You know, if that's all you have, it's you and your, and your drawing board. And, you know, even if you draw a beautiful, well, I'm not saying you gotta, you're going to like, oh. But, like, right. if you talk to a lot of dudes that like anime, like, I mean. <laughs> Is this like a, a uh, distinctly male phenomenon? Is there a female equivalent? No. <laughs> I bet there are. Sure you just have are. to really like cartoons. Yeah. You have to, like, it's a fiction. It's the idea of. I, I think, think if it, you love animation, it doesn't matter what the subject is that you're drawing. I don't know. I love animation, and I. I, I like, love. But as an animator. I'm no, but I, I mean, I, I don't. I'm not an animator, but I, I can draw a little bit, and I've you You've know, never been said, into art, oh, and I've why never. Know. Oh. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. uh-huh. yeah, I was I was like four when I watched Thundercats. No, Come I didn't. On. I didn't want to jump line. Out. Hey, I was like ten when I watched. Yeah, I wanted Tara. <laughs> Tara. It's bad. So, I think that was I my think first it come, animation I think it crush. A little earlier for boys. Yeah, I'm just saying. Sure. I was just aware that there was something. I mean, she's in a leotard, right? That's mm. almost flesh colored, running around. See, see, but that's the thing, though. I think because for for little girls, it's not as sexualized, like. For us, it was we would look at Prince Phil or Prince Charming and be like, "Oh, I want to marry him." It's not sexualized for little girls because they don't they don't get there as quickly as boys do. Hmm. They they get the emotions, but not the not the hormones. Ooh. So it's it's a different comparison. I mean, I think this really comes from. I mean, especially this movie. Uh, you were talking about how Ralph Boxy was the first to animate Fritz the Cat. Well, like underground comic books, right? The idea that. Comic books were censored in the 50s from all the EC Tales from the Crypt stuff. Um, you know, they had to be they had to go through a censor board or whatever the hell. So then dudes in the in the 70s basically start drawing their own comic books, just really break, you know, like like pushing the envelope on the type of hell. I used to have a comic book called uh Air Pirate Funnies, Mickey versus the Air Pirates, and it was about Mickey Mouse being a uh, coke smuggler mm-hmm. and like in the comic book he has sex with Minnie you know and it's like this is the type My of God. Sh- <laughs> well this was the type of stuff these animators would do right yeah. because I like the idea that like every cartoon you've ever seen every comic book was never made by a kid ever it's right. always an adult so it's like why wouldn't they be I mean the same way we watch horror movies why wouldn't animators and illustrators just dive into the darkest recesses of their imaginations mm-hmm. and just come up with like Fucking whatever, right? And then, yeah, the idea of drawing these sex or women, sexy women. I mean, this shit kind of comes from what, like the bomber girls and the the pinup. Yeah, yeah. The the, the idea Betty that Boots. like 
Yeah, right. Like, she, like back the in first... the day, you almost like only could draw porno. You know, I mean, you really couldn't like the Tijuana Bible, the shit like the uh, the Chinese or the Japanese people that have all the old like Tijuana like Bible. plates and stuff with porn like drawn all yeah. over it. Uh-huh. Just because that's the only way to have porn was to like. Oh, it's it's been around for as long as people have been around forever. Cave paintings. Is that's where why, it like, started. you know, God like, bless movies forever. like Roger Rabbit and Cool World that take you from your adolescence to like. I still want to watch cartoon. Hello. You know, like, <laughs> nice. Like, all of a sudden, this cartoon's growing up with me. <laughs> well, I just wonder, it's like, has it actually grown up, or is it still indulging an adolescent uh, frame of mind? You know, the idea that I think, you know, because you grow up into real women, I assume, and, you know, we're so- talking about, like, a movie where literally humans want to have sex with a uh, cartoon character yes and specifically the the creator wants to have sex with his crea- his drawn creation yeah i think it's the idea of something you can't touch right because like jack deeds the illustrator played by jack. a very young gabriel byrne yep yeah jack. he was what he plays a lot of priests right he's in, <laughs> he's in, like in a lot of exorcist in, movies priest, Stigma- therapist in stigmata what else? I don't know. Is it, it seems like he's always been. Wasn't he in End of Days? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He was. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that guy's constantly like a priest or something. But it was usual, usual suspects and a therapist and in treatment and all this. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell you. But uh, so, I mean, I guess to get started, what well, we start with Brad Pitt, right? Dude coming home from war. We do. And this is in like 1945 and last good old Vegas. American. Boy. I mean, this is the problem with this movie. It's like the focus of the movie is on the sex where a lot of the story doesn't fucking make any sense at all. Right. Oh, any sense at all. at all. Because like <laughs> makes less might, sense than almost might Brad be an Pitt's accent. It's like 1945 in, in uh, Vegas and, and Brad Pitt comes back from World War II, gets a motorcycle, takes his mom for a ride. They get in a car accident. I do like that scene when he like has a backflip. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. No, that's all oh, no, fine. Yeah. But what does it have to do with anything else in the movie? <laughs> well, no, that was just cool. The fact that <laughs> he just got back from war. Like he's been back from war for a day. So if you get into a car yeah. accident, he's like, Medic! I think yeah, that's, yeah. I like, no, that's a good the moment. Only, yeah. The only thing I got from it is between the, the, uh, the accident and having the post-traumatic stress and losing his mother, that was his trauma that he didn't want to come back to the world. That's yes. the exactly. only purpose for the yeah. scene. It doesn't really pay off in the, uh, you know, That's narratively. In the, yeah. And yeah, that also no. showcases his <laughs> early uh, acting ability. <laughs> He's third build on this movie. He'd done like yeah. Thelma and Louise or something before yeah. this. Yeah. This is before the Brad, the year of Brad Pitt, 1994. Yeah. And I yeah. love Brad Pitt, but the, woo, in this movie. Do yeah. you? So there's like a Dr. Whiskers guy in the cartoon world, in Cool World, which is a thing in 45, just as it is in 92 or whatever. Because yeah, Cool World has existed. It's a parallel dimension of Basically, animated characters. Yeah. And the doctor has some spike thing. Power spike. It's, it's a all, power it. spike. Don't try and explain it. They didn't. We shouldn't either. I mean, we at least know that it opens it. the door. All it does. It opens the door. The gateway. Which is a rip in a little And rip. I guess yeah. like between worlds. The way Holly explained it is like the way that they should have explained it. The idea that it wasn't because I'm always like, how did the spike bring him? it didn't. The spike just tore open the divide, the whatever fabric. you want to call it. And the fabric between worlds. And the veil, if you will. Brad Pitt's character Wanting to escape that reality so badly is what brought himself to Cool mm-hmm. World. Yes. So if you want to leave this world, you go to a cartoon world. You couldn't go to any other dimension. Well, I guess the spike opened that dimension. So that's why he went to that dimension. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of, I mean, what? you sitting we, in a chair he just, drunk. He just says that, oh, yeah, dude, this movie... <coughs> Like, does not have the care of Roger Rabbit, right? No. Of eye, li- oh God, eye yeah. lines and oh, not yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just looking <laughs> no, no, somewhere. No, not at all. They're just <laughs> over there. And, like, they'll Hi, only Travis, have, like, you? spotlights that way. Like, oh, so what if the arm goes in darkness? And then, right. like, it will react with a cartoon because it's like, fuck it. Like, it'll be, the, it'll be better for the animators if they, you know, 
don't need to stick with anything. But yeah. you know, it's kind of interesting. Like, I saw this movie, the last time I saw it was in 1992. Right. So, I mean, my memory of it's very hazy because, I mean, this is a movie that you see in a certain type of haze. But <laughs> what mind frame yeah, you're saying? <laughs> or that damages you. I don't know, one way or the other. But um, I remember, like, my memory of it was that they took... Brad Pitt, like against green screen or blue screen, put him in an animated environment. And this time watching it, I'm like, oh shit, the whole the world is actually there. Yes. It's like so it's like there's yeah. It's, 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 yeah. it's like a 2D cardboard world of all of Bakshi's or you know, whoever it's that, the, it's the that artists. Dude that does the he I don't even know who the guy's name, but he did a lot of the paintings for American pop. Because he's got that very weird, like I don't even know, characteristic uh Art form, yeah, yeah, it is really like just over. There's just something weird about yeah. it. It's awesome. I can't it's kind of gritty. That. It's kind of. It it's almost doesn't match with yeah. anything else in this movie. You know, this guy's got his own art style. The smiling buildings, and but I do, I do kind of like that. How like in this movie, like unlike Roger Rabbit, they try to maintain the idea that this world is two dimensional. This is yeah. a flat world, right? To noids. Humanoids. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't get the lingo, that's the that's movie lingo. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. yeah. It's going to be like lichens, lichens, noids. If you noids shorten things. Noids are humanoids. Ah, noids are humanoids. Got it. And doodles yeah. are. Doodles. Doodles. The drawings. doodles. Yeah. So that like, one I got. I like how yeah. like, even though he'll drive up in a three dimensional car, when he gets out, it'll it's be flat. the flat. And, yeah. you, and the camera makes sure. To show you, yeah. like, yeah. no, they make this a is point flat to, yeah. Yes. Yeah. when you look at it from this angle. And then when they go around the front, then boom, it's a flat version. I kind of like that. Yeah. But I'm like, why is it a real car? Right. <laughs> that's yeah. my problem. Right. Yeah. That's their budget, I <laughs> think. But maybe, well, I think they're either that or they're going for Because, I mean, of course, the idea is like, I mean, a majority of uh, cartoons. Yes, things. That's what I was have, thinking. Have, yeah. What's that? Unless Brad Pitt's character interacting with things makes them 3D. Like, when he gets in the car, it turns into, like, a 3D car. See, that's what I was wondering because of the whole, like, the out. main the main know. point in the movie is that <coughs> he can't have sex with a cartoon because of that very reason. If he's involved with it, it becomes real. Ah. But then, but then they wouldn't need to do that two-dimensional thing. I still think they're trying to go for that car is painted. Because... Maybe. Most cartoons from back in the day all painted backgrounds. That's why yeah, this whole yeah. movie is supposed to be a painted back, a two dimensional painted background right. with uh, cartoon people walking around. Yeah, so, a lot of cartoon that people. That that's the other thing about this cool oh world. My God. It's like there random. are so many ra- yeah random. random. Like you'll be focused on a scene between Brad Pitt and Hollywood, the Kim Basinger, the sexy uh, character, and all of a sudden. Five or six or ten like the, other characters yeah. chasing each other's around like with these mallets. weird animaniac type of things, and then there'll be like a floating skull, and it's yeah. Just sometimes weird they'll as be fuck. like, like that's why I like the idea that like the you know they call themselves doodles, and then you do see black and white like unfinished Sketches. people yeah. floating around. I've always loved that idea. That's Without how, rhyme or reason, they're just float they're just through there. or chase each other through the scenes during it's, dramatic it's a, scenes. Yeah, it's an animated world. It's really weird. Well, because I'm sure like once they got around to making this movie, they're like. Because, I mean, this movie... We need more stuff going Like, we're on. talking about all this, like, Who Framed Rod. It's like, no, this movie's actually about, like, an interracial couple in, like, the 20s or whatever, right? I mean, this is like an urban interracial couple story. Because that's the only thing people are concerned about is it's almost like... It's almost like Jack Deems, the artist, is a black man and everybody else is being like, oh, no, that's not going to be good for you if you sleep with him, you know? I didn't get that. No, you didn't get no, that. Didn't get that. <laughs> no, I didn't get that. Oh my god! It read to me Crazy. like it's a. The whole what? movie is just about that. Is it? Yeah, it's about how like noids and doodles don't do it together. They don't, you know, they don't go together. I mean, this movie is kind of the same. So the scene. whole thing is about modern segregation. I'm just saying that's how. The, I'm not saying that's what the movie's about. I'm saying that's how they wrote the movie. It plays out like that. It plays out like a, a movie about segregation, keeping the noise from the... Mm. But the problem with this movie is it doesn't have... Like I said, like, okay, Jack Deems, for some reason, Holly can pull him in. How, yeah. Well, I, I didn't yeah. understand. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's no... They just know Without that they the want spike. you to go to... Well, but once again, I think the spike, all it just... 
did was thin the mm. whatever the veil or whatever. Well, he also has a backstory. I mean, much like the Brad Pitt character, uh, who becomes a Brad Pitt becomes a detective. Basically, he's adopted as a police officer in Cool World. But the Jack Deeps character, we meet him in a prison, and it's revealed later that he's a successful comic book author and that he's in prison because he killed the man they found in his wife's bed. Mm -hmm. And so he spent some time and now he's just gotten out and you're like, okay, this is going to go somewhere. Like this is just kind of one of those random, you know, backstory building things without any kind of payoff at all. And you're like, why is that scene in the movie? Yeah. If it doesn't lead to to him being at home drawing. Yeah. Yep. It could have started with him at home drawing. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. the trailer does. I think they um, want to give you the re- why would he want to escape, right? If he's sitting well, in a cell. Well, he wants to escape because he you know, lives in, he's an artist who draws all this stuff. I get it already. Like, he wants to live in a, you know, and, and his creation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. His in, creation is his heaven. In prison, where they apparently just let you set up an animation workshop. Yeah, in your can. cell. Yeah, most ta- he's not in most tattoo. No, most tattoo <laughs> uh, pages you see are from prison. That's what they let those people do. Because yeah. you got to have a goal. Got have something. You do. Hmm. You have something. So then Jack Deeb's obsessed with his uh, his creation As is brought into <laughs> Cool World by Hollywood. By Holly. Okay, so Hollywood is a character who longs to be real for i mean i guess she idolizes marilyn monroe how she has access to marilyn monroe movies i i'm not entirely clear on well they know about the real world they just don't tell you how or like right. why they just know and extent. they can bring people over i mean no, i don't get it yeah because they're is- also aware like brad pitt's aware like he's been the same age mm-hmm. from 1947 for 50 years. yeah for yeah. 50 years and he's aware who Jack Deebs is, even though Jack Deebs, the creator of Cool World, hasn't been into Cool World at this point. And he, Brad Pitt is, believes that Jack Deebs is the guy who thinks that he thought Cool World up, even though it exists without him. How does he know this stuff? How can he? Because he's an interdimensional this- cop. But he never like, moves between the dimensions he establishes. That's what this movie was doing to us the entire time. Yep, 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 yep. Well, why is that happening? Yep. Uh, just yep. let it go. Just go wait ahead. for Holly to dance. <laughs> that's why this is happening. Because we need to move the storyline so Holly would dance. Yeah. Which uh, is not Kim Basinger, I'm assuming. No, in those moments of not. Where she's rotoscoped uh, dancing. No. Yeah. No. So nice. was uh, Hollywood a uh, person? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <coughs> Did Travis Watching as a, a cartoon, little boy keep well, a little, little boy and uh, pausing it during certain? As a grown boy, I could. I could. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. Anyway, what do you mean anyway? She, she's drawn very nice. Uh, mm. So yeah, so this whole thing becomes like this. It's a. It's an odd three character piece, right? Where our hero is the Brad Pitt character. Yeah. He's the guy who's trying to save the universe because apparently if the Noid and the Doodle have sex, it's going to Well, we don't even know yet. Or something. Well, yeah, he says they just something know that, to that like, effect. And yeah. he's like determined to stop it at all costs even though he has a Doodle girlfriend himself, but they never actually go no. on that no. way. No, no, no. I love mm. that. Yeah. She's awesome. They suffer like in her. frustration. She's awesome. She's a great character. Mm-hmm. And like Brad said, Pitt for doesn't... some reason, Cool World's 1945. I don't know why. Like, why did it like it? Well, Shoulder pads actually everywhere. A question I was going to ask you, Travis, if you're familiar with, like, these different animation styles. Like, in the Cool World, like, I saw, like, Thumper from Bambi was a character. Yeah. Like, I'm one of these marginal characters. There were... This is all 1940s, 1950s. It almost doesn't go past the 50s. Because even... Like, we were talking before about where the sexy girl characters come from. And, yeah, we mentioned Bomber Girls. But, but, but I, like, really narrow it down to uh, Red Hot Riding Hood from, uh, God damn it, who's that animator? From I Chuck. This one. I can't think of his name. <laughs> Look up Red. He did Droopy Ch- T- Tex Avery, maybe. I don't know. I can't think of it. <laughs> I threw out a name. <clears throat> maybe. Anyway, yeah. but remember, you don't remember, oh, Woofy, oh, Woofy, ain't you the one? And the wolves go, oh, that's like the classic, like, first, like, 
really fucking sexy ass cartoon lady. Yeah, but I mean, just aside like you from... still can't find Red Hot Riding Hood on like any droopy oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. compilations because she's like one of the sexiest fucking cartoons ever. It's Let me see Tex Avery. Tex yeah, yeah, Avery. That's, but it's also like the standard like wolf. Oh, right. right. The mask. See. The mask had a big thing about it in, uh, you know, the yeah, yeah, with yeah. Jim Carrey. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I really yeah, think yeah. that's where Holly Hollywood type characters come from. Yeah, but the, other, Tex Avery, the other really characters. Sexy. I'm yeah, because there was about... a lot of the, the, that wolf type character that he was like all over in the club that was tons of them but then yeah. like her little gang they're very they're a lot more modern it they're, seems like he pulled from a lot of different sources because yeah. a lot of them look like they're just colorized versions of very old cartoons from back in the day For, yeah That's exactly like. right. the guys with the mallets everybody beating each other up yeah but just, specifically like warner brothers here tex avery there he was warner brothers right and then uh disney here yeah a little mm-hmm. bit of max fleischer yeah, yeah, here. yeah. I, it feels like he grabbed from everywhere and just put what he liked i mean i don't know if I, I mean aside from thumper i mean it's a bunny right so it's like that's thumper disney, right yeah i mean maybe but were there other characters that anybody recognized that were like oh my god that's so and so from or was this not like was so this a wasn't a wreck it ralph kind of situation no, no but no. It, they are recognizable in like i show my kid those old 50 cartoons and one DVD yeah. things or 500 Like you saw like a black and white kind of Bosco character. Yeah. Like when they go to the edge of like where they're supposed to, well, I guess you're supposed to be like the red light district and there's that one like, oh boy, it looks real fun down, you know? Yeah. Uh, the Bosco <laughs> voice. Variations of those in old cartoons. Again. Yeah. But really, yeah. So like almost nothing past the 50s. Mm. No. Just because those were like the zany times of cartoons, yeah. right? The... I mean, cartoons really had no purpose other than to dance to music. You know, cartoons used to not necessarily... I mean, they had plots, but it wasn't necessarily about character. It was about just, like, doing something to music. Yes. I think that's what I like about old cartoons versus modern-day cartoons. That's just hanging out, dancing around? Yeah. Yeah, they're awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the uh, Kim Basinger character, Hollywood, is... I mean, and again, being obsessed with trying to become real, she has this ideal that like real women on the in the real world have access they have to power. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, that's yeah, what she wants. They have yeah. power. A real woman has power. <laughs> power they have. Like as a doodle, that's what I like about Holly. Uh, what is a character? She's a very self conscious character. She understands people drool over her. You know, mm-hmm. and she just uses it, right? Mm. Yeah. She understands that she can use it, but she can't do anything as a fucking cartoon character, right? She's like, dude, I could, if I take the same sex appeal into the real world, you know, I could just have everything. Mm. Well, it's kind of like, it seems like, like she becomes the villain of the movie. I think, well, maybe even the whole, the whole movie. Through, she's, yeah. she's ne- that's what I like. They never hide her, like, t- to you, the audience, they never hide her, uh, Self, her motives or yeah, her, her self in, in, it's self interest, but yeah. she's self possessed and like you know Jack D, D Jack whatever Deeps. Jack D you know the dude is just like thinking with his dick the whole yes. I mean yeah. that's why I like every scene like as Susie falls in there she has to come out dancing you know she has to be dancing because that just gets him like oh and then I mean shit just the way she talks to him with the very whispery very like hey baby mm-hmm. and shit like that it's just like. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, so they do ultimately do the deed, not graphically. No, no, movie. she don't even take off her shirt. Like I'd be yeah. disappointed in this cartoon sex. <laughs> well, yeah, it is PG thirteen, I suppose. Yeah. It is PG. You got to go for heavy metal if you want to see cartoons I having so, sex. Which is so weird that this well because of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. They're like, let's branch this out. It's just weird. We it's like, games, like they, they swear they curse their irreverent cartoon characters. It's Do like, why curse? didn't they go they with They only say pencil R. dick. Well, still. They say, There's like, a couple of why you always kick in my ass or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it was PG-13. So. Yeah, but True. why not go the whole way into really art? Especially it was since just it's talking. Ralph Bakshi, who traditionally, I mean, like, if he's made movies that were X in the 70s That's or true. R in the 70s. Well, because like, they need to sell this. They need yeah. a toys. I'm just like, who's the audience for this Me. movie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah right of, after Roger Rabbit, yeah. dude. Right after Roger <laughs> Rabbit, I wanted to see more cartoons with live action people. Mm. I just like adult cartoons. I like adult cartoons. They're cool. They're you know, even if they are uh, by adult, you're saying like risque cartoons. Yeah, like anime and like uh, sexploitation, like like yeah. exploitation cartoons. Just because, I don't know, they're fun. You're not like. They tickle your fancy? Yeah. 
You know, right. they're sexy like cat people. Yeah, they're sexy like <laughs> oh, cat <God>. people. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to ask any like embarrassing young actress to take off her clothes. You know, you just draw it. I think that's way more like you, you do know, have a lot more control technically in that area. For sure, in all areas, if they're just animated. Well, the stuff. downside is that it isn't a real girl. But yeah, the, the, she's not gonna become a cokehead because you like said like. Come on, baby. You know, like we'll just yeah. But now you've got give you stuff a few like bucks. you got. You've seen that movie Beowulf, right? The Robert Zemeckis three yeah. D yeah. rendered, where there's like a three D naked Angelina Jolie. She didn't. I think she well, was pregnant well, at the time. I'm sure, she was in her like just the skin tight. Well, movie. she. I know that that was the time she wasn't doing movies right then. That was like in that she fit that into her schedule during the time when she was probably showing on the special features. She's not, you know, in all the documentaries behind the scenes, she's not present. Mm-hmm. But in the movie, she's she looks like you know Angelina Jolie, mm-hmm. yeah. But she's naked. She's animated, so it's like that seems to be going even like further. Where it's like, okay, so the actress isn't really there, and she probably was clothed when she did it. But here's a nude representation of her, which I think is more like a, you know, it looks more like a real woman than yeah. Say, this is Hollywood not right. basic. <laughs> No, it's not like this well, that movie was rated PG 13, I guess, like because it didn't show nipples. Well, Beowulf was like, How is that? It's just a full nude, but it's Angelina nudity, Jolie. like, ah, like, is that like that it's traditionally lock R-rated your kids stuff. up? And it's a sexual scene, she strokes his sword nice. and it melts. <laughs> yeah, they don't like that. <laughs> sex is not on high on their uh, well but he's the one clamoring like. for a stiff like a like a stricter like rating on it like, <laughs> like a stiff what a stiffer <laughs> rating yeah. Yeah. let's leave that word out yeah um <laughs> he's, he's pointing it out he's not necessarily clamoring for it but he is pointing it out um he's clamoring i'm clamoring <laughs> quit Stop clamoring. down your letter yeah <laughs> okay so um uh, past the uh the the a PG thirteen. Nineteen year, nineteen year old Hollywood turns into thirty five year old Kim Basinger, and yes. then you're like, shit, they should have made this in like eighty <laughs> seven. Like that would have been the real Hollywood. Back in the nine and a half weeks days of Kim Just Basinger, before yeah. before Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not that she wasn't very attractive. Oh, yeah, it it just looking. wasn't the cartoon to the. Uh, the it didn't match, not, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, to be fair, no one's gonna match that. That's true. <laughs> that's true. But that's what it's supposed to show you, right? You're supposed to be like, ah, oh, fuck reality. That's why I like the yeah. Jack Deeves character. I love how the Jack Deeves character is like, well, she's like, you really like it here, don't you, Jack? He's like, yeah. You know, I like how this dude <laughs> is just all about escaping into this fucking cartoon world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. And. uh well, once they've done the deed, they end up coming back to the they real world. They just think themselves back to the world like you do. Because like you do. She just wants, she wants to, I'm not even t- entirely sure what her, I know what her objective becomes, but like once she actually gets to the real world, it's like, I want it all and whatever I want, I'm going to have because she's just, you know, yeah. Yeah, she doesn't have an objective. I don't think she has a plan. I think she just really wants the lifestyle that she sees in front of her, like that she sees Marilyn Monroe have. She doesn't realize doesn't that know how to get it. She doesn't realize it's not real. She doesn't know how to get it. Yeah, she doesn't know the real that world that's a is movie. faker than cool world. Yeah, that's why I like that scene when Brad when Brad Pitt is talking to Lynette about how he has to go back, and he's like, "You don't understand." He's like, "It hurts over there." It like I love that scene. Like I mean, yeah, it could be acted a little bit better, but well, it was uh, it was good dialogue. It was it awesome. Was. Good dialogue with a bad accent. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Holly, Holly and Jack yeah. Deeb share like this uh, car ride. I remember like, you know, where it seems like these are two people who were attracted to each other, uh, had sex. And then like, as soon as the bloom is off the road, like they yeah. hate each other. They can't... She doesn't really like him. She's just using him. And, and I don't get the impression he, he really sees likes her. her. Sex. Well, he yeah. only sees her as a sex object. Yeah. All yeah. he did was draw her. That's the, he doesn't he, like, he liked know. his creation more than the real person. That's he the got. whole point. Yeah. Of, that's the whole point of this is she's using sex and he's only thinking of sex and they're making, and they're really making sex the villain of this whole movie. So does sex then make them buffoons? I'm trying to figure out what the hell they were turning into because they start popping in yeah. the real world. I don't They're know. They're popping why. into so animated confusing. versions of themselves, but it's not like as Holly pointed out, uh, Hollywood doesn't turn into the animated Hollywood. 
She turns into like this like clown grotesque version. clown yeah. version of herself. But I think that's because they can't control it. That's the idea, I guess. Is that sex made them stupid? Just <laughs> no, just crossing the doodle world with the noid world. Like you can't yeah. control. Like, you don't know what's gonna happen. But it's, it doesn't make sense. Like, of course, it doesn't make sense. She's turning <laughs> he had into sex the with a cartoon. Nothing makes sense. And even when even when um, Gabriel Byrne starts turning into, he starts turning like these like Mickey Mouse hands. Yeah. But yeah. then when he turns into a cartoon, he's like this Gaston superhero. Character. Like. So uh, yeah. I was thinking, I was like, I wonder if they did that just to save on rotoscoping. But it's still relatively rotoscope. There's it's still following their movement. So I don't know. I don't know if that's an answer. I'm still going with the whole idea that they can't control, like, who they're going to, like, just the same way that, well, the other people were turning into things that kind of look like them. Well, this is after she gets a hold of the spike. This yeah, becomes she, I, the... I pulls it out of the hole. Well, it's so stupid that there's this, like, Vegas Vinny thing about, like, I was yeah. just like, yeah. that whole fucking thing. I'm telling you, man. Like, that's why I'm, I still think, like, the focus of this movie is the whole, like, these two people shouldn't have sex. That's the focus of the movie. Like well, anything around there or other than that. Have sex with your drawn creation. Okay, but here's with my here's knowledge. another question. Right. Here's it's not another question. Sex is bad. Just sex with cartoon so, characters is bad. Holly has sex with Gabriel Byrne, and they and then she obviously turns human, and then they have to get out of the world. What if they had stayed? Would it have altered them there? Uh, good question. Because mm. if not, then why didn't Brad Pitt just have sex with his cartoon well, girl and turn I her human? Then, right, then the opposite would happen, and then the people in the in the cool world would start popping into uh, reality as real people. Since the reverse of that is happening in the real world, right? Like, yeah. in the real world, once you pull the spike out of the whatever fucking yeah. tower, then a chain of events that makes no but, goddamn but sense. But I'm saying, like, before the spike is even pulled out. If the, if the spike was never touched. Right. And then they left. That's when they start warping. the real people who were... <laughs> I don't know why Brad just, Pitt's following them around with a gun, like, question. threatening to shoot everybody. I don't know either. Time. Like, he's really mm-hmm. trying to stop he's this He's playing hardcore. this, like, a, you know, like a 40s, like... Gangster. You know, well, it's like, like a, the Jack Like Webb, a detective right? yeah. The yeah. 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 But he just wants... He's like, I gotta stop you. So I'm gonna do whatever I can. I'm gonna shoot you. And he, so he's got this gun, and he's just always, like, pushing people and kicking people. And mm-hmm. Does he ever shoot the gun? I don't think he ever shoots the gun. Mm-hmm. He, he points it just, and hits yeah. it. Yeah, it's, a very good, ah. it's a very good acting tool. A lot of behind yeah. the head. Like, 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 ah. like ah. <laughs> <laughs> he got, A lot of that. He got a lot better throughout the 90s. <laughs> Oh, definitely. I still kind of like him <laughs> in this movie. I mean, because it is almost like Brad Pitt by himself. Yeah. A lot of this movie, Brad yeah, Pitt by himself. It. I yeah, think Gabriel yeah. Byrne does it the worst. And Kim Basinger is just like, why did you sign up for this? Because you're acting like, I mean, she acts like a bimbo the whole way through. And just like. Yeah, I don't know how I buy her as Hollywood more than like the real Hollywood. Right. Like somehow it's like, how does this not transfer over? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's the voice, and but it, I don't think the physical mannerisms of the cartoon one were based on Kim Basinger. Yeah, no. exactly. Right. Because and she even tries to do a bunch of stuff yeah. and it's just like, Ugh. It's like yeah. but maybe that's the idea, right? The idea that yeah, like, like I said maybe. before, no one that, that, Character is not going to transfer to any well, actual. But it was person. rotoscoped. <laughs> no, but I'm saying like so the, her uh, movements, her yeah. like actual sexy movements, yeah, her no, body like language. Doesn't I know translate. you could just tell it's, it wasn't. It's never going to be the same. Yeah. Well, well, but, it, but somebody but it was had to, Yeah, so somebody Someone did. filmed it. It was that. No, I get that. that well, but I don't think so. that's the act that I don't think that was Kim Basinger. No, mm-hmm. right. No. So, so it's that's why we're saying it doesn't translate. Yeah. But maybe that you get old clunky, old clunky Kim Basinger when you had. Sorry, Kim. That's being really. Hard. <laughs> well, I'll just say. Uh, <laughs> hey, you're well, you know, you went from Hollywood uh, the cartoon, to cartoon ideal perfection to uh, Kim just Kim Basinger, you who know? was at the time I think regarded as one of the most beautiful women in the world. Yeah, I know, sure. right? <laughs> but that's what I like about this movie. I like about how this movie is about. This untouchable idea of women, this untouchable idea of a world, right? I mean, they both have it. Hollywood has it about our world. She thinks our world is all this greatness that you can get whatever the hell. And, you know. Brad Pitt kind of thinks the same thing of cool world. Yeah, just because he just knows, oh, you don't have to deal with, cir- uh, uh, you don't have to deal with any um, pain or what have whatever. you. Whatever, yeah. Suffering. And you don't anguish. die. Yeah. And you apparently don't die or age. Or feel anything. Just, or feel anything. You're just fine. Yeah. 
which is which why is he went 50 of... years without uh, fucking his cartoon girlfriend. Well, yeah. They I, wouldn't well, be able to feel it, it anyway based like on a line years, of dialogue so. from Hollywood. Real girls feel things. Whatever the hell. They taste things. She rubs her boobs up against it. Yeah, she does. Little, with a nice I think little whistle. Little, yeah, I was going to say, it made some sound. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. There was a noise. Dude. That's good cartoon shit. Man. That's, what I'm saying. That's, that's classic cartoon shit is using just a musical instrument for the humor. Mm. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Uh, so she ends up in Vegas, goes to find what, Vinny Vegas. At the Vegas, w- yeah. Vinny. Vegas, it's Vinny? so stupid. And it sees the power spike on top of a building. I mean, I, how random. She identifies it. Okay. Well, because she knows that oh, Vegas Vinny founded this hotel, and for some reason the spikes up. It's just like what the. We fuck don't is- know who Vegas Vinny is. This is a myth apparently that exists within Cool World. The doc has been running you, around for fifty years. I was yeah. just saying, it's a cartoon character coat. that got out into the real world and became Vegas Vinny. And it can't even be a surprise because it's like, well, we saw one doctor with the spike, and then she has a legend about a guy with a spike. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. I wonder. Who Vegas Vinny is? Yeah, <laughs> Professor Whiskers. And what the fuck is Professor? This is what I don't like. What's about he been doing? What's he been doing? What was his fucking purpose? Nothing. Just hanging out. And like they don't even mention like. Well, so did you start this club? I don't know if you started this hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? How it, did someone else get the cartoon spike on top of the yeah, building? If you didn't start the hotel, why is the spike up there? And, yes. and he's like, I can't hold on to it. It's like, so what was holding on to it in the first place? What? Yes. Oh, yeah, this movie does not, like, care to answer. <laughs> no. But, I, dude, I feel the same way about Roger Rabbit. I've always thought, like, once really? you go to no. once you go to Two no. Town, in the third, the third act of both these movies, it's like they got nothing. All they know, like, let's make a movie about cartoons of humans. Cool. What are they going to do? Well, they got to go to Two Town. It's like they never think about, like, yeah, but what's the end? What's I mean? So what? I don't. They go to cartoon. I don't have nearly as many questions as Roger Rabbit. Like, well, I'm not saying questions. It's got a pretty solid third act. It seems. Nah, oh whatever. come on yeah, Dude, yeah. No, we've talked about this in our Who Framed Roger Rabbit episode about how right there's about no that. reason for Eddie to go to like <laughs> to town like they, he gets hit in the head with a fry like I'm gonna explain yeah. the whole ending of Roger Rabbit well, right, right. Right. go, go back Rabbit, and, and listen to well, our Who Roger Rabbit Roger hits Rabbit him Rabbit on the episode. head then, then Valiant like Eddie Valiant you know, I they, don't know. <laughs> uh, he went that away. Well, he let's go, go. Yeah, he goes to Toontown, and then so fucking uh, she like saves him from the judge, and then they leave. Why Toontown. He, it's he, like, why the fuck did we go here? And he, wait, he runs into there. ugly Jessica Rabbit. Ugly just Je- yeah. What's her name? Uh, hyena. hyena. Uh, something hyena. Something hyena. Uh, Tina hyena. Tina or hyena. Shit. Oh my! <laughs> Uh, Sorry, uh, we're talking a lot about Roger Rabbit, uh, but I just yeah. had to point that out that it's like, no, there's no reason for It's like they start like not. But this movie doesn't have reasons for like <laughs> any things. given thing that's happening. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> now somebody can go through a wall. There was something like yeah, just... I remember in the climax of this movie. I remember like I think even you guys were in the back. of like, why is why is this happening? I'm like, <laughs> ah, this is like number 187 on the list of like. Yeah. Things I can't yeah. explain Why about this movie. Through walls yeah, this movie has everything. huge plot holes. Yeah, but things just happen. Stuff, right? If you get and Brad Pitt dies. dropped off of a building and killed, apparently in the by real world. But as long as it was ha- by a tune, this is yeah. like they just keep making up. Uh, Which would it like hurt? Like <laughs> yeah. would it Loretta or whatever <laughs> yeah. fuck like just kill him in the first place so he could become a tune? This is yeah. like a yeah. stream they just know of that? consciousness yeah. movie, right? Where it's just kind of like this is why i think it probably plays better while you're under the influence of something because it does just kind of make up its own rules almost scene to scene oh for sure like what are we doing now something happen uh well uh the ink pen and then yeah. seven seven characters will run past clanging. What's pots with the and pans? She's stabbing them and then sucking it up into it, but for what purpose? Just to hold them and not have them be in her right. way? And I don't get why it blows up. Like it's one of those things where they're just like, you don't know what it's gonna do, because I don't know what it's gonna do. Like as the writer, <laughs> I'm not sure it's gonna Yeah. This, is, this is a dangerous weapon. I'm not sure yeah, why. She blows one up. And he's just in It was one of those her. things, you know, they say if you introduce a gun in the first act, you have to it's like, well, you you didn't. You like you introduced the fact <laughs> so, yeah, that this we is don't this all powerful thing in 
uh, in, in Doodle coral. were right. Coral. Apparently, it's very dangerous and very dangerous. Coral. And, and he's there. just like, I know. I like the demonstration. Where he's like, this is Brad yeah. Pitt showing this. Like, you got this pen, Jack Deebs. It's like, look, this is really a terrible weapon here. And he puts a drop of it in. No, he like sucks up. He sucks. It up looks like something. he's sucking up well, beer. Yeah, it's like liquid. But the way that I guess the fountain pen. If you have like an old timey fountain pen, would like get filled with ink, I imagine. Yeah. So he's like, he just fills it with the alcohol, then shoots it over to the spider. Who's uh, drinking alcohol? Who's drinking yeah, alcohol? Yeah, and then sure he takes a, was, here's see, a I shot even, of this. I didn't even catch what was going on there. I'm like, what? What, what he the was fuck just, happened? I don't know what that because I thought I thought that he was, was supposed, supposed to, to go crazy or something. Well, I, don't I, know, I thought that was like, that bad. Well, I yeah. thought I that was supposed it. to prove that that ink pen can distort reality there, but I'm like, how? But how did that distort reality? All he did was suck it up and and like right. Yeah. <laughs> no one no. was manipulated. He just refilled his drink. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, if you could start drawing doors where they weren't supposed to be and shit like that, like, that's a better right. yeah, idea. Yeah. 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 Like, like, the we uh, here, epic we Mickey paintbrush. Yeah. 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 Like, it, yeah. it could actually alter Cool World. <laughs> right. That's yeah. A better idea that's right there. Cool World 2. Cool World 2. Uh, Please. You know, but the end of this, so uh, this is another thing where it seems kind of. Jack because of superhero. I love that. Yeah, but like, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, because once uh, once they take the spike, the Cool World reality spills over into our reality. Yeah. There's stuff running all over the place. People are accidentally turning into animated characters in the real world. And Jack Deeds becomes like this superhero character, and yeah, because for some reason there's like a dumb speech by the Professor Whiskers that's like, "This is your destiny. You have it." And it's like, yeah. at what point? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, talk yeah. about he's how, like, off to become a hero, and you're like, "But why? This is, why? they just started this right now." I mean, that's why this like hasn't I been wish, built to at all. But I no. can no, but I can see. I mean, stretching, of course. I can see like if they would have worded it as in like. You know what? This is your chance to live in a world of imagine. Like, use your imagination to become whatever you want to become and help us. Like, then I could see how he could be like, "Yeah, finally, I could drop like, the mortal like human coil." Right. But yeah, they just say like your dreams. De-, you know, shit that movies say, and you're yeah. supposed to like just like be emotionally involved because it's like they said it like that. <laughs> you know, I get it. Yeah. And Holly becomes a cartoon again, which she seems happy about. Yeah. But I thought she wanted to be human. She's like, I like it here. I'm like, but you're a cartoon But I think she's kind of chaotic because she thought she can use, because I, I love that scene where she's like, I'll do whatever. He goes, Holly, you're thinking like a doodle. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's like, that's a very important scene because it's like, you know, she only thinks she could come over and affect our world. Once she sees she can, that's when she's like, fuck it. I'll, you know, I'll bring the cartoon bring world here. here. Even though she thinks the spike is going to heal her. Yeah, it's like they don't have, they got like four reasons on why they need the spike. <laughs> All, nothing that has anything to do with each other. <laughs> yeah. It's like, so the spike is keeping the tune world away. The spike will also help you control your ability to stay a human. Uh, I don't know. And other. Well, as long as superhero dude is able to replace the spike in whatever the hell it came out of and reverse all of this calamity, everybody turns back to real people. Yep. And then, so then we immediately leave uh, the superhero Deebs and Hollywood. Yep, that was done. so funny it's how done. he turns out because she could just like, oh, Jack. I like how she could just like, just fucking put her hand on her hip and just like, yes, honey, buddy, or whatever. Uh, right, yeah. yeah. I love that. To distract him. This yeah. is hilarious. It's just so funny. But we go back to the Brad Pitt character now dead. We find out that he can be resuscitated, as we said earlier. Oh, you didn't know? And we take it right because we just made it up. Take him back to Cool World, where he becomes a cartoon character. Who did that guy look like? Those eyes are like Popeye or something, or Bluto, or who the fuck? Those blank eyes. It's no, just it was, like um, the pie eyes. It just looks like Mickey because Mac and Mickey only had just the black just eyes. The black it was kind of like well, no. They're like these elongated, like, ovals. Oh, whatever. Yeah. So he finally gets to have sex with his uh, girlfriend, LaVon. What was her name? I don't know. Lottie? Lenore? Lynette. I don't know. Lynette. Yeah. Thanks, Lynette. And that Lady. seems like, it seems like that's the end of the movie. And I'm like, wait a second. Did we, because I think somebody actually says, all right, that's all, folks. Or we're kind of, yeah. you know, so thanks for spider. coming, thanks for coming folks. <laughs> have a nice life or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're like, you're not going to have another one. And I'm like, but wait a second. Did I, like, fall asleep? Because it's possible. Did I wink out and miss the resolution to the uh, Jack Deeb's Hollywood storyline? 
And there then, was a well, comic panel. Yeah. Then that came after that. It yeah. was like, oh, okay, here it is. So they are going to go. Because they, got like, people over they there. got like sucked back into the spike. And then the doctor told the neighbor who was there for some reason. I hate oh. the neighbor. Oh. The neighbors. <laughs> yeah. The She's a no nothing character. Neighbors. She's there like, to be on the phone. She's there to like, see Hollywood as the character and in the comic book. the doc back yeah. there to drive well, and, them and to The Vegas. doctor told her, he's like, oh, we don't, they might be fine. We don't know what the spike is capable of. That was we the resolution. Yeah, that was, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, it. Yeah. Like, yeah. We don't know. So they might start animating this as they were writing. Or like, <laughs> I think, Maybe. I mean, seriously. It has I mean, to like, be how much like that. did they spend on this? I mean, it boggles my mind that this was a major Hollywood or you know a major studio production. You know, this Ooh, had I mean, some on. kind Cartoons of with money humans. behind it. Cartoons they could humans. not have thought that they had the next Roger Rabbit on their hands. They, 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 like, they, 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 they knew they had a more adult type. one. I think they were ga- gunning on that. They had a more adult one, which is probably why they didn't have enough money. I mean, they were making it a kind of an adult movie. They really were. Like I yeah. said, this whole thing's about fucking sex. <laughs> yeah. The whole movie yeah. is about sex. Yeah. Which I suppose that right there, they're like, ooh, oh, sexy hi. comics, Eric, sexy cartoons. Yeah. It's from the guy who is known for this, Bakshi, right? who has some kind of cachet in terms of, uh, you know, credibility. Mm-hmm. And he hasn't done anything in a while, and so we're going to give him this shot now to make, just, I don't know. It's just, it's... It's amazing that this movie exists at all. You're like, what? This is the last thing that he did, we said, right? I think it is. Until I the think... Kickstarter, the last days of Coney Island or whatever it's I called. Right? But there's I nothing mean... theatrical after Cool World. Well, so. how old did the guy have to, does he have to be? He's got to be fairly. Or oh, Foxy is probably old. Yeah. 78. He's 78? He's 78. Hmm. Yeah. yeah Anything sure theatrical can. after Cool World that we're. Cartoon, cartoon show, short, 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 TV series, TV series. Yeah, nope. Fun. That's about it. Huh. Yeah. And maybe, was maybe, he did a, maybe he did a Simpsons couch gag. Did Bro, you get the budget on the, this movie, Hallie? What's that? Did you get the budget on this? Is Mm-mm. that what you're looking for? Oh. No. It's... it's like, was it like a major? Hollywood thing? used to take risks. That God bless them. is true. It is one of those like filmmaker driven. 30 million. Budget Jesus was, Christ! <laughs> budget was thirty million. Box office gross was fourteen million. Ouch! Woo! Thirty million. Yeah. Dude. I know, right? That hurts. And this was like Frank Mancuso was escorted off the lot after this. Like I could just imagine, like <laughs> the, go. you know, just watching this movie tonight. I'm like, this executives watching this had to be just sitting there going, like, there's no way we're gonna make our money back on this. Like, there's just no yeah. way in hell. <laughs> 30 million, man. Yeah. Yeah. Estimated. Sorry. That's still (laughs) maybe like (laughs) 28.5, but it had to be something to be Ralph Bakshi at that moment that like all of a sudden you've got this shot, you know, at another big theater. I mean, like it had to be like the biggest push of a movie in his entire career. I assume because it seems like even this is it. Well, maybe I think even Lord of the Rings was, I mean, it wasn't distributed by a major releasing Warner company. Brothers? Was it? Yeah, it was Warner Brothers. You sure? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like MGM. Or th- it's yeah, on like Warner, Thorny. Warner Brothers did all the... They did Fox? The, the Rankin and Bass ones and the... Uh, well, those are for TV, yeah? Was it Fox? Somebody put that... I can't remember. Were they for TV? Well, well I thought, Lord, I of the thought Rings. Lord of the Rings was released in theaters through Warner Brothers. I thought. I could be wrong. Cause yeah, I don't think it was, I but you might be right. I forgot that the Hobbits were... Late yeah, Hobbit TV. and Return of the King were done by Rankin and Bass. Lord the, I, thought, I thought Lord of the Rings was a theatrical. I don't mm. know. I didn't know. Mm. And it's Lord of the Rings, but so that story's never actually finished because it ends, I think, at the Battle of Helm's Deep, his version. And it doesn't say that it's like Lord of the Rings Part 1. Mm-hmm. It just yeah. ends at the Battle of Helm's Deep, and you're like, yeah. what the hell? And then that was in 78, and eventually Rankin Bass said, well, if he's not going to finish it, we in 83, I think they did the Return of the King for uh, like that. for television. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's Cool World? I think it is Cool World. All right. I think then. so. Well, I'll tell you what, listener, we're going to answer some mail. And then after the mail, we're going to come back and give you our final thought- thoughts on Cool World. So we hope you'll stick around. But first of all. We need to summon our mailman. Where is Igor? Igor? 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. What is the Wolfman, Dracula, and Batman? (laughs) 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 All right, so about cool... Oh, uh, I should tell you where you can write to us. All of these fine people whose messages I'm going to read uh, commented on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Go on over there and give us a like. And hey, while you're out on the internet, give us a like on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or TuneAir, wherever you found us, or a comment. It helps more than you know. Uh, Ryan Cushing writes in and says that anyone who grew up in the 1980s and claims not to have had impure thoughts about Jessica Rabbit is a filthy liar. I know, they're liars. That's true. I was going to say, Holly. (laughs) All right. Uh, Nick Hammond (laughs) is married to a girl named Holly, and he says... I'm thinking that this movie is the reason I married my wife, Holly. Growing up, I always had a crush on Mm. (laughs) She-Ra. Wait, She-Ra? I concur, She-Ra, He-Man's sister. Yeah, Thundercats came after that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that Uh, was... About the same time. Okay. Whatever. No, Thundercats was after. He-Man was like 82. They were both great. Uh, About our previous episode, Cat People, Chris Huddleston writes in. And says, guilted him into talking, (laughs) Holly. (laughs) Called him out last week. Congratulations. He actually wrote uh, two comments. We're going to read the cat people one. Uh, He said, we all know Hollywood is currently obsessed with remakes, and it pisses many fans off. But movies like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, The Thing, and Dawn of the Dead prove remakes don't have to be terrible. What film or films would you actually like to see Remade. Critters. That's a good question. I'd actually like a, a good remake of The Shining. A good, oh, God. A good version. If you were talking about the, the uh, Invasion the uh, remake of Invasion of the Body Snatch. Like no, the no, Daniel no. Craig movie. one? Yeah, I heard it, it was, was a horrible, horrible movie. movie. Specifically the 70s. The, uh, the good say. one. Give me, yeah, give me a Critters update. Give me, give me yeah, I could do a monsters. Critters remake. Yeah. Yeah, for that. Where, where, where's my trick or treat remake? That's wow. all I'm with who? <laughs> with <laughs> what music? <laughs> what music? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, what would it be? Well, you move it to Finland, right? No, so it's right. Like, yeah, just the black metal. metal. Yeah, that's yeah. not well, even it was popular. <laughs> Death no, as a kid in the Midwest gonna hear on TV that a black metal guy from Norway died? Yeah, it's not never gonna work. <laughs> well, people we don't listen, people don't listen to black metal. We'll set it all in Norway. We'll set up camp. In we'll do this ourselves. No, we won't. All right, so now it's time for our wrap up. So now it's time for the wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear that yeah, sound? You know. That's the sound of Lurk the Butler, for whom the bell tolls. The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. Thanks, Lurk. Thanks, Lurk. Looking good. All right. I'm gonna say, like, waiting for the uh, pithy so comeback right. to lurk. No, we're just waiting for him to leave. Yeah. <sighs> All right, so uh, I guess that's me. I'm up first with Colin. What Sean. did you think of Cool World? Um, I'll tell you, I do appreciate, as we were talking about earlier, movies that are like a distinct point of view, a distinct personality, and when big studios take risks like this the only problem is you know uh you know you take the risk and sometimes you can lose you know you bet the house and you can lose the farm right uh uh, this movie is tough to watch that was my experience it kind of reminded me all right i haven't been in this situation so it's not reminding me of everything but what i imagine it would be like to be tied down in a chair while a two-year-old with a pan in one hand and like a baking sheet the other Bang them together while playing like Justin Bieber in the background. <laughs> wow, you really uh, brought your feelings yeah. and uh, formulated them into wow. uh, physical things that you can describe them with. That's uh, maybe, did I say he was screaming at the same time? No. Uh, yeah, and screaming in your face the entire time for <laughs> like an hour and ninety six minutes or however long. Your How long was for this movie? movie? <laughs> well, I don't know that I uh, one hundred and one minutes. Oof. I don't. I don't know. Hate might be a strong. Too strong of a word. Not com- in comparison to your analogy just now. Uh, but it was extremely annoying like that. I guess that's the thing that I'm trying to say. Like, the experience of it was 
hard, yeah, right? Yeah. But I appreciate some of the uh, decisions and the talent behind the scenes that went into it. Like, I think Brad Pitt acting by himself in a room does a fantastic job, you know? Uh, the art decoration is something, you know? So, <laughs> It exists. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it better than exists. I mean, that whole 2D flat painted thing yeah. is like, it's interesting. So it's not without merit, but I think overall, because it doesn't coalesce into something meaningful in any way, it's just kind of like noise. Somebody's turned the volume up on like white noise or something. And mm-hmm. yeah, so I did not care for it. I wouldn't recommend that to me. Uh, the pros of Cool World. Um, I do enjoy um the animation, like Colin said, the sets, the the whole um, uh, when he when things would turn two D after he got out of them, and just everything. Uh, like you said, set design, very good. Um, cons, most other things in this movie. I mean, I can't. Brad Pitt, uh, an actor I usually really really like. Uh, wow. Uh, overacting. Um, and the accent just threw me off. Um, uh, Gabriel Byrne does not much, and the story is just not good and doesn't, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Um, I appreciate the animation, and uh, you can watch it for that, but other than that, I would not recommend Cool World. Yeah, um, as someone who grew up with Roger Rabbit, it's hard to come into this movie with the knowledge of Roger Rabbit because that's such a well done movie. Um, and the, the similar, I mean, the contrast is just, it's hard to sit through. Um, it's, I was bored for, for most of this movie. Um, I, I understand the appeal of Holly. I I mean, she's a hot cartoon. I get it. I'm, I kind of wish there was an equivalent for girls now that you guys brought it up. That would be kind of awesome. Um, but, yeah, I, I the animation is interesting. It's The concept is interesting. I like, like we talked about earlier, the, like the random doodles that pop up throughout, throughout the time in Cool World. It's, it's a really interesting concept. I, I appreciate that the artists kind of went, like, really in, uh, got in touch with their creative side. They really tapped into their creative conscious for like the little side characters. I do appreciate that, even though it was distracting as hell. Um, yeah, I can't, I, I really don't have anything positive to say other than that. So I, I can't recommend this movie. Oh, you people are all crazy. Every one of you. <laughs> well, would you have to be on acid to like this movie? No. Oh, would it help? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, you just have to be a little lighthearted. And so, no, I, oh, I mean, no I fucking love this goddamn movie. People are crazy. It's like taking. <laughs> The, the, like, the, the really sexy, like, three minutes of Jessica Rabbit in, in, uh, Roger Rabbit and making that a half an hour long, basically, that's what this movie does. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's just because this was one of the first movies that showed me, like, a version of my love. world. Like, like, if, if Mallrats... Came out in like what ninety six? We're saying all rats ninety six. I scrubbed it from my memory. I don't know. Oh, you're one of those. That's, people. It's a horrible. Oh movie. Jesus! <laughs> also, a horrible oh movie. Jesus! That's a great movie. I'd rather watch Mars. Oh, that's I would, you people I off would the just, show. I'd rather just leave and go home and nap. <laughs> yeah, anyway. than watch either one. Stink fist or stink. But I like. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is like one of the first movies I saw a comic book store in a movie, right? And it, oh, except for like uh, Lost Boys, True like, Romance. Oh yeah, fuck True Romance. Movie. What? Yeah, that's right. Oh damn. That's right. I think we've had that conversation before. Mm-hmm. I, don't like, I don't like that movie. <laughs> Uh, if you go back, listener, he recommended it. Who? You did. (laughs) (laughs) That was four years ago, but, uh... I don't think I recommend it. Are you sure? Yeah. Go back. I doubt I did. Everybody go back. (laughs) Do Uh, it. I doubt I did. I know we've had this conversation. (laughs) But, okay, so... yeah. Yeah, I, like, I I don't know. I I love the story about a dude that, uh, I mean... It's like the only story they don't have is the spike and all that bull. Like the the reason why these two worlds are merging. Yeah, they don't have that story, right? But I like the story about what a person feels when, like I mean, I don't know. Once once again, maybe it's this thing because 
I draw. So maybe I understand what it's like to to when you draw to like you feel like you're there. Like somehow when you're drawing, you feel like holy shit. Like like when I draw Superman flying, it's like I'm fucking flying like as Superman. It's just how art goes, I guess. So I understand what this guy feels like drawing a beautiful woman and just like fuck. I wish I was with you know. And uh, and uh, I don't know. It's fun. I like how it's a little rude. Once again, I like. I like the type of movies that showed me that I don't need to put away childish things. They can grow with me that like that cartoons and comic books. They're not just for kids. They are, it's a still a way to express yourself. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not too many movies that do this mixing of live action with, uh, cell animation. So, and we probably will never see it again. So. You don't think so? Yeah, I don't. Everything's computer now. When will we ever see hand cell animation composited with live action? Uh, Looney Tunes with Brendan Fraser. Uh, I, what, is that happening soon? <laughs> no, no. But it, did, like, it did happen like. Space Jam remake? Oh, yeah. When Space that's Jam happening. comes back. You think that's not going to be computer? You think it's going to be hand animated? Yeah, they don't hand animate anything. Was the Congress that that didn't have any live action? uh, It wasn't animated overlap. Yeah, it wasn't composite. You know who Brad Pitt reminds me of? Uh, Cartoon Brad Pitt reminds me of The Adventures of Tintin. That's who he reminds me of. A little bit. Uh, A little bit. They just have those 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 like blank eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Cold no. dead eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this movie's great. I love this movie. It's uh has no third act. <laughs> <laughs> That's legit. Yeah. Well, you gotta you know you gotta be able to call him where you see him. But I still like this fucking movie because, dude, Hollywood if she could, dude. Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood if she could. You just can't fuck with that character, dude. She's uh, a badass character. Do you still frame moments of this movie, Travis? Didn't you just like a photo on Facebook that I think I saved the image of Hollywood? Because <laughs> it's like, dude, she's dropped that like, oh, way, way better than Jessica Rabbit. Way better. Ugh. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I'm judging her. Like, <laughs> so. so that's a uh, cool world. Uh, next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. Sean, what are we going to be watching next week? Merry Christmas, everybody. We're going to watch Jack Frost. Jack Frost. The one with Michael Keaton. Not with Michael Keaton. <laughs> and all these guys are going to like it except for me. It's going to be crazy. Just wait till you tune in. It's going to be fucking Maybe nuts. we'll watch the Michael Keaton one and we'll all just like sit here and cry Ooh. and just be like, uh, he died. No. Uh, oh, spoilers. <laughs> Jesus. All right, shit. Yeah, he died and turned into a snowman. It happens in any. I thought he turned oh, into a snowman. Oh, this the beginning. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, friends. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>